Hey guys, welcome to the parts room. As you can see, we got it stocked up, ready to go, ready for the winter, all the new things we're building, pretty excited. Roger Johnson, Performance Center Racing Warehouse, PRW Chassis. Uh, getting ready to show you another podcast I did with um, Jason Turner from Ace Speedway. He's got a real good thing going over there. He's had an opportunity to do a bunch of things through the COVID, some ups, some downs. Talks about small business, talks about his kind of his side hustles and what they are and and uh, the races to come here at Ace Speedway. So check it out. Leave us a like, comment, subscribe. Tell us what you think. Tell us what you want to see. Really like it, man. I'm having a good time. My guys are having a good time. We're building fast stuff. Appreciate it. Come on, be a part of it. Thanks. back again i'm sure we did some crazy intro we got a lot of great stuff that we're going to bring to you we, we got a couple of characters in the shop that we, we can't even wait to tell you some of the great stuff that we've been doing some little segments some uh little setup segments some uh little how more of the how they're made some uh, trailing arms different things like that and uh jason turner with us today been trying to get him over here for quite a while all this covid stuff went down so much happening he's been busy he's also got a graphics company they do uh, a lot of promo items do banners hats t-shirts all kind of crazy stuff so we were able to break him away on a on a crisp morning to come over and hang out and chat with us thanks for coming yeah man thanks for having i know it's been a while it has been a while we, we uh fortunately we, we get an opportunity to text back and forth about kind of some of the things that are going on around late mile stock car racing and different things but it's just nice to kind of get you here i, I really wanted you to be able to have some type of a forum to to not beat your drum necessarily or stand up and get crazy but you know i, I don't think a lot of people actually know all the hardships that you kind of have to go through during this COVID. i mean somebody some people have been really affected some people really haven't been affected but but for you guys you know you were in it early you do have bills to pay you had to work very hard had to go through some struggles had to go to the courthouse had to you know we're in the news we're we're right to the forefront i, I guess i just want to really dive into because that's what we try to talk about here is just some of the behind the scenes of what goes on i, I just really want to dive into how hard that was like i mean that had to be like for me we were talking about before not that bad right like very appreciative for all the great business that we've had and all the business that's still being done but for a guy like you where the faucet just gets shut off different game yeah it's one of those things where we we were i like to be uh proactive rather than reactive but in this situation i've had to do nothing but react um you know not because i was uh tested or anything like that but because just you know all these different restrictions come down the different phases um and they can all change uh, at, at the, the drop of a hat, really, the, uh, you know, when we opened up for the first race in May, phase two of reopening was supposed to be outdoor venues at 50% capacity. So for us, we would have sold, you know, 2,500 tickets and, and all would have been well in the world. Well, the, the day of the, the press release, it wasn't 50%, it was 25 people. So I was like, well, you know, we've already sold tickets. We've already sold sponsorships. We've got billboards on the interstate. We've got uh, radio ads playing. We've got social media ads driving. You know, we've got uh, literally, uh, as soon as we announced the reopening, and I put it on Facebook with just like a $50 boost, um, we saw almost 1,000 shares and over 100,000 uh, re reaches on Facebook. Just, just because of the the uh, the network that we've built through all this, and and when you have that many eyes watching, you know it gets really really hairy really quick when you start uh, having a battle with the government. Right. <laughs> so, 
So uh, <laughs> that's pretty much what happened, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, that's pretty much what happened. Yeah, and uh, and like I, I'm not trying to beat my drum here, but like my my former boss, it, you know, he's the owner of a, a, a great company. Um, you know, just uh, our paths didn't we didn't follow the same path this far. And he told me, he said, you know, I've made a lot of money. I've made a, a lot of good decisions, a lot of big decisions. I've done a lot of big things. He said, but you've trumped me in the sense of, you know, I've never gone toe to toe with the governor or with, with, you know, any national media coverage. He said, what you've done and the fact that you've been able to keep a cool head has been, uh, he said, that's not the Jason that I used to know. <laughs> I'm sure. I mean, that's a, you know, that's something that I don't even do. I, I don't even look at that. That's just not my mentality. To, I didn't either. To, right? To, I, I've never been in that fight, thankfully. Right? I, I, I've never had to to take on any kind of large entity like that, especially one that you're playing from behind automatically because it's the government, let's face Absolutely. it. Right? Like you, you're a, there's not a ton of people that, that win in, in that deal. How hard has this been on everybody? I mean, uh, I, I think that's something that we should talk about you know there's a lot of little tracks as you mentioned that you they get a chance to kind of sit back behind and and play from behind a little bit which is one of the great things about a small business and then the larger the business gets the more in the spotlight you are the more you know and, and with ace at that point it was kind of a separation right like you were pushing all in as other people were really drawing back and how much did that there was a lot of sacrifice, I imagine, that went into that. Well, when your chips are already all on the table, you find yourself in a position where you have nothing else to lose. Um, you know, we, we, when we bought the track and we started running the place, you know, we realized uh, from different perspectives uh, what all the track needed, what all the track was missing all these years. And, uh, you know, we already had all our chips on the table. We just weren't showing our hand yet. And, and... So you get that far along and you've, you've run some practice, you know, open season, you know, early season practice before opening night, what would have been opening night. Um, you know, you, you get the tire sales, uh, you get everybody stacked up and ready for, for opening night. The place was a powder keg. 2020 was going to be our year, a Speedway's year that it hadn't had in a long time and it was overdue and, you know, it was, it was coming. 2020 was supposed to be big. And, um, I just didn't know how big and in what way. Um, <laughs> so it's been really hard on a lot of the people involved, you know, every, everywhere from, you know, us, our employees, our, you know, we've got a staff of nearly 50. Uh, you know, most of these people don't rely on a Speedway for their sole means of income, which is great. They've got the flexibility to go and still earn a living, but um, they come to us and that's their, you know, it offsets their electric bill or it offsets the gas sure. that they put in their vehicles. And, you know, it's just a, a well, comfort. Just part-time workers. Yeah. I mean, and I don't mean part, just part-time workers. I mean, they're, they're intricate family members of yours, but they are part-time workers. Right? Absolutely. They're tended 12 hours a week. But they all love Ace Speedway just sure. as much as we do. And that's the thing is when they see it, they see us in the position that we're in. They want to just, they want to take the pain away, but they can't. And um, so, you know, we've got sponsors that we have obligations that we try to, to you know, still meet the obligations. We, we take care of those people as best we can. We've even been fortunate to still sell new sponsorships even amid COVID just because of the national media uh, coverage that we had at that one point. They wanted to be a part of that, um, it, it, you know, but you, you, you just don't want to enter in an agreement that you can't, you don't, or not that you can't, but you don't know when you're going to be able to make good on different tracks have handled this thing differently right um, you guys had your events early then we're kind of forced to close things back other people kind of just had modified events where they didn't really they didn't really have fans in the stands they didn't really it, we don't get to see the, the the person on this side of the of the racetrack we don't get to see all the things that have gone on or haven't gone on where do you believe the value lies? Does the value lie that, okay, I, I, I couldn't keep my racers all year long. I had to close down for the government of what we can do, much similar to Tri-County, right? Like, they kind of, similar type deal. It can only come back so far, and they couldn't operate at that level. 
which way do you think the better play is? I've, I've, I've asked this to every racetrack and promoter that I know. Which way do you think the better play is? Do you think it was better to, man, I need to hold on to these customers because I'm afraid they're going to go somewhere else, be it your racer or, or your fan? Or do you think it's, man, we were closed down for so long, they're thirsting for more, wanting it, wanting it, wanting it, that you'll have a pretty good crowd this next week and you already have a decent amount of cars that say they're coming, right? So do you think that was better to hold it back or do you think that looking back on it now, maybe you would have just had races without fans and tried to squeak by and do it? I think uh, looking back, I'm, all, I'm always a very unapologetic person. Sure. I, I try to, I speak my mind a lot. You know that when you talk to me, you're going to get what you want 100%. You know, it may not be the answer that you, you <laughs> the want. The truth anyway. But you're right? going to get the truth. You're going to get the yeah. answer that you need. Or at least that, well, you know, you're going to get my take on things. Uh, as far as the better play, I, I never really thought about, you know, what if I'd have done something differently because, you know, I did what we thought was right. Yeah. We stood up because... You know, uh, not that anybody else wouldn't, but we knew that when the phases and the reopening started coming, we just we gave people an outlet to to come and have some sense of normalcy. We were on the, we were advocating for the side of the people who wanted their life back. You know, we 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 let people decide for themselves if they feel like they can come out, come out. You know, we'll we'll still have some six feet. We've got some separations between our employees and yours. Uh, you know, we're following the, the protocols as best we can. And, uh, you know, if you want to wear a mask, you know, that's your personal choice. You know, I, I let people have their personal choice. That's just like all the racers that come and I get nasty emails or nasty phone calls or text messages from other promoters uh, that think, you know, these are their cars. They're not their cars. Right. Those cars belong to the racers, the sponsors, and that's their it. teams. They don't belong to me. So I don't view those as my customers. I view them as, hey, they, they spent their hard-earned money to come and race with us. Um, and I'm just, I can't, I can't appreciate that enough. You know, we, we sacrificed our, uh, passion for the sport so that they could continue to have theirs. And, and we just chose to do it at a speedway, which, you know, it, it's just one of those things where we didn't think about a play or we didn't think about, you know, what are we going to do that anybody else isn't going to do? We didn't try to open first. We knew whoever was going to open first was probably going to have a really good show. But, you know, we just, it kind of fell into, the reopening fell into what our schedule had already been uh, laid out to be. So we said, okay, you know, we're going to keep going with this next race in May, and then we'll go from there. Um, and uh, I really had, just don't know how to answer had, that question I had, 100%. I had promoters call me pissed, like mad, when you guys first opened it, how... You know, you were, I, I, I want to make sure that I get the verbatim right, but you, you were, you were endangering people in the sport and how you were bringing us all down and blah, blah, blah. And here I'm saying to them openly, man, I'm appreciative for people having those events for, and I'm appreciative I didn't have to make that call for people to have those events, but without racetracks racing, Performance Center is virtually useless. I mean, I, I don't, <laughs> it's great. You can build those things, but what what is your response to that because looking back at it now people didn't they, they can't contract trace 40 people got sick from being at ace or they can't these things just didn't happen right that was a lot of the knee jerk so i think you i think you did all you could do to do right like i mean there's only so many options at that point i think you got to be pot committed and just yeah. run with it yep exactly i think we did the right thing um so i would just you know we focus on a speedway i don't focus on what other people do uh if they want to do whatever what they do what they feel like they have to do uh, based on the circumstances that they have and based on what they have at their disposal and and i can't fault them for what how they run their business or what they see they do what they feel is right and and that's all i can expect now I, but i'm going to do the same thing sure i feel like i'm going to do what's right for me for a speedway for the people who come to enjoy a show or to participate in a show um but i think, I think your gofundme as, proved that not to interrupt you but sure. your go that was like that wasn't something you set up that was we didn't set right, that, that, up. Was, that was an outside entity of people that believed in what you were doing and how you were doing it and it lit like a match and was off and running and Absolutely. reached some fairly sizable numbers, which is an a testament 
of a free will giving of people that just wanted to support your cause. Absolutely. Well, we had so many people reach out, and even um, candidate for governor Dan Forrest, once he seen that somebody had set up a legitimate GoFundMe page where we said, hey, this person is legit. We didn't ask him to do this, but he literally works across the street from Dad's body shop. And uh, so he he started this page and asked if it was okay, and he he said, well, I hope it is because it's already gotten you know fifteen hundred dollars. So it was either that or he's gonna have to refund some money. But Dan Forrest comes in and he shares this on a, on a statewide level, and says, hey, look, you know, A Speedway is doing the right thing out here. They're trying to fight for for their rights to do business, and and you know we support them. So we're gonna we're gonna donate a thousand dollars. So we got a thousand dollars from Dan Forrest. That, you know, I, I'm I know Dan Forrest's uh, campaign manager. Nice. Um, you know, I've been in in contact with them a little bit on some things that I wanted to do. Some of which they they didn't. They said, you know, hey, we got to tread lightly on that. But did you ever think that running or managing a speedway? Did did you ever think that it would thrust you this much into a political thing? That that, that you know, I try to stay very unpolitical at Performance Center. I, I just think people's views are everything that they want them to be. I'm not here to tell them who they should like, what they exactly. should like. But, but what's intriguing about your standpoint is you very much got thrust into almost no choice in the matter. Right. It wasn't like uh, it's red or it's blue or it's, it just was a survival more than, more than anything else. But when, when you, you could have never thought when you guys took over a speedway that this could turn into a political because at a certain point in time there a speedway was making <laughs> the north carolina news on a regular basis oh, yeah. i mean regular basis we the okay. national news <laughs> my, my my parents in ohio yeah what what are they doing down there they're right i mean that just uh, that was it's amazing the reach that you got at that point looking back i, I couldn't have there's no way uh, even some of my sponsors called and said hey look I can't pay you for the amount Correct. of media coverage that I receive. 100%. I have a friend that works in the uh, RTP area uh, for a major advertising firm, and he calls me and he says, hey, you know, I went to school with this guy, and he says, hey, um, do you know how much media coverage you just racked up? Right. And I said, there's no telling. Right. And he said, just this one spot was worth about $2.3 million. That's awesome. And I said, you're kidding me. And are he you, said, no way. Are he, you using that to go as you go forward? Absolutely not, because I, I, I don't want to sit here. Now, you know, I've got it on my hoodie. It says the famous 410 smile, but it was called that before, sure. you know, the pandemic ha you know, ensued. And, you know, we just kind of ran with it. But, you know, I don't want to use I don't want to be insensitive to the fact that there are some people that have died from COVID-19. Sure. And, you know, we want to we want to pay our tributes to those people as we move forward and remembering, you know, what they went through. Um, and they're, you know, pay kind of respects to their families and respects to, you know, everybody who's been affected by this. But it's, it's affected everybody in different ways, but it's affected everybody. Um, it had to be personal. See, I, I, I made I it keep personal when my rights to do business in North Carolina were taken from me. Yeah. That's when I made it personal. And I just made it, I stood up for the people who wouldn't, the people who felt like they didn't have a voice. They didn't realize that they still do. It's just, you know, how much merit is placed on, you know, the Joe Blow bar owner who can't open his business and feed his family versus somebody who's already in the national spotlight. I just had to take it and run with it. Do, do you feel that there'll be long-term repercussions from that? I don't think so. No. I, Which is at great. This, at this right? point, I think, you know, really they just want to see that you're going to play ball. And, you know, we, you know, I don't think the long-term repercussions are coming from that because – they're not focused on stuff like short track racing. Right. They're focused on, you know, running big pharma or, or running, you know, insurance into the ground or, you know, <laughs> the, the things that government do best is, is ruin things. Uh, sure. they're, they're good at one thing and that's ruining everything. So uh, without trying to be too political, no. you know, I, I was thrown into that position, not I didn't earn that position. It's something for, for those of uh, people that are involved in our deal that did, don't really know his he and his father um, lease a speedway or, or have a v agreement to to own part of or what whatever that's they they take care of a speedway they they pro pro propel a speedway in a direction that continues to make it grow there's been some really great ones before you that i think seem to still kind of play in their weeds that's the great part about a speedway it's kind of always collecting people that they don't ever leave the the, the the Brad Allen's Corey Latham is a lover. You know, people that get into the deal, which is 
a big part of what I think makes it great. The same people have been sitting in the same stands for a long, long time because they're the same supporters. AAR Roofing, big supporter. Absolutely. Right? Like a, a lot of great supporters from that area that have really latched onto it. What do you tell them now? What do you tell them that we're, we're I hope toward the end of what is a COVID pandemic I, or, or, or past halfway, let, let's get at that. What, what do you tell them now that, uh, that the Turner's plan is from here on out? Well, I'd, I'd say it like this. The Statue of Liberty is, is on a concrete foundation. It's solid, it's not going anywhere. HP was the same way. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I, I think that it's, you've gotten some of the neighbors where they're happy now, right? As many as they can be. And you've, you've played the, the uh, done a great job in playing the politics. Just a crazy story. I would have never thought that a speedway would be thrust that far into it. And I, I think you handled it exceptionally well. Yeah. If it was a movie, you wouldn't believe it. Yeah. hundred percent. So you think you're out of the woods. So you're, you've, I, you guys have announced a race this, this, uh, next weekend. And, um, What's the plan going forward? Try to get a few races in. Maybe I can one here, one there. What, what, are, what are you guys thinking about doing? Yeah, we've got three races scheduled for October, and uh, we're going to push one for November. Um, I get married week two of November. So uh, it kind of, yeah. you know, we had planned on that and, you know, racing being over right, for sure. at, that, at that time. So, you know, or at least at A Speedway, racing comes to a, comes to a halt, and we, we winterize, and then we, we get ready for 2021. Um, so, you know, we've got three races. It'll be a uh, race on the 9th, which is this coming Friday, and then a race the following Friday. And then we move to a Saturday schedule where we have a Saturday race on the 24th, and then we go dormant to allow people to have, you know, Halloween and, and time with their kids. And then we come back on the 6th and 7th for the Rodney Cook Classic. Which has always been a pretty good event over there. Yeah, a lot of heavy hitters like that. Like that race, it carries a ten thousand to win price tag, and you know, this day and age, sometimes it's unheard of, sometimes it's not. But uh, the Cars Tour does a really good job with having big races. Yeah. So they've got a thirty thousand coming up, and you know, that's a big deal. That is a big deal. That is a big deal. Tell us about you know some of the things that I think that racers don't necessarily understand. I, I know you've had a big forum to to be able to go, but and talk to a bunch of people. But how? I want the racer to really understand your perspective of how hard it is to truly make that purse every week. I, I think that people think, man, you're just sitting over here and collecting $25 and we make 30 bucks off the tires and we make another dollar and a half off the gas. Well, by the time it's done, it doesn't equal that 12, 15, 2,000, 2,500, 3,000, oh, $10,000 bomb. So, absolutely not. I mean, how hard is that struggle? I, you know, you hear back, well, man, they, they're carrying bags of money out of there, right? They're, they, they're, they're, it's, all, it's all they can make. And, and I just don't think that's true, right? I just, I, I, I think that we are in business to make money, so that we, we need to do that. But how hard is it? I mean, is it, is it sponsorship? Is that, is that where your hardest is? Is it the racers? I know the racers can can be their own entity, right? Like racers can be your best friends or your, your worst enemies, just like that if things th don't go their way. I feel like racers know when they come to Ace, they get a fair shake. Yeah. They feel like the, te the tech man, you know, the, the tech room, the tech shed is operated efficiently, um, effectively. Those, those racers that pass through there, either pre-race or post-race, are gonna get equal treatment, regardless of if you're there every week or if you're, a, you know, an outsider that comes in and dominates you're going to get the same treatment. You're not going to get picked on just because you're Joe Blow that hasn't been to a Speedway all year and you come and wax us at the, the very end. Um, everybody knows when they come to a Speedway, tech is on point and they're going to get a fair shake. Um, sponsors, they love the place. They've loved the place forever. A Speedway is kind of like gravity. Sure. Everything just kind of flows into it. And, and when it does, it, it, it makes it not necessarily easier, but it's, it's something where you know that there's a constant uh, of support from a speedway uh, surrounding businesses a lot of Burlington and uh, Reedsville businesses really come together and support racing because you know if they, they want the track to be there because it benefits their business somewhere in the long run you know AAR roofing they've always supported a speedway sure. they, they supply sponsorship dollars they come to the track and they and they compete but they, you know, at the end of the day, all the other racers know that just because they they sponsor the racetrack a little bit, they're not going to get a, they're not going to get 
a, a, a leg up in the tech room. Sure. And then, um, you know, we've had – the fans have had our back since day one. You know, we knew when you – know, I've raced at that track – for right. a number Long of years. Time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I've been there when there's only 300 fans in the stands. And I know as a driver, that energy level is just not the same. But when there's 2,300 or 3,300 or 5,000 in the stands, you're like, oh, man, I need to get up on this wheel and see what I can do. Right, there's and people watching. it just pushes you that much harder when there's that much energy. Uh, it's like a powder keg ready to explode. And, and it's just, it's un, there's nothing else like it. What do you think the worst What's the downfall? What's one downfall of a speedway? What's, what's one thing that people knock you on that you, you know it and you're trying to get to it? And uh, It's minor things at this right. point. It's, hey, this one bleacher that I love to sit I on needs to be replaced or this, that, and the other. And we've had, we have so many. When we, when we went over the track, we, we knew it was going to take three years, so from 17 to 2020, to really get it where it needed to be. You know, we wanted to put a new street sign up, but that costs money. That takes time. Um, luckily, I own a sign shop, so I can take care of those needs. Sure. <laughs> However, the needs of my paying customers right. come first. So, you know, if somebody comes to me and says, hey, I need 500 hoodies, but I got a sign to hang up at A Speedway, that sign at A Speedway is going to get hung up at 12 o'clock at night if I have to. But, um, you know, so the little things, the, the, you know, when we got there, we painted every building. We wanted it to look nice. We did some landscaping. We got rid of the go-kart track that was in the front yard. You're right. We got rid of all those tires that was creating a mosquito problem. You know, we got rid of all the, we did all the small things first that were gonna make a big difference, a big impact. Um, and then from there it was, you know, infrastructure. Making sure that that place could run uh, like it was supposed to. And now it runs like, it spins like a top. You know, everything works. When you throw a breaker, you know it's gonna come on. When you flush a toilet, it's gonna work. We've replaced just about all the toilets in that facility. Um, all the electricals on point. The plumbing's great. Um, you know, we've remodeled the inside of every concession stand. All new equipment. Um, you know, it, but it's taken us this long to to kind of get there at that point. And you know, a speedway. Not that it it doesn't make money, but it, it doesn't give me a paycheck either. Sure. So you know, when I rely on income, I rely on accelerated graphics. You know, that's where I make my check. So a lot of my sponsors that come to me and say, hey, you know, you only have 17 races a year to 20 races. Uh, if I took my 20 best days, I couldn't make a year's worth of income. Sure. Okay, but it's not set up that way. It's not a, it's, you don't have fixed costs like payroll every two weeks. We have one day where we have to pay everybody payroll. Sure. You know, our insurance is only, you know, based on events. events. So, you know, we don't have to carry, you know, full on annual insurance or workers comp or, co well, we do have to have workers comp, but we don't have to carry a lot of the other things that, uh, most businesses have to have business, yeah. so but you know when i broke it down and told him i was like look man i don't i don't i don't bring you know 75k out of this sign i mean out of the racetrack every year right. I, I i forgive that to dump back into the racetrack so <laughs> when we put new bleachers up uh, it's because we didn't take a paycheck right we don't want a paycheck out of that because we have day jobs right so you know we have a lot of people that help behind the scenes to make sure that things get done and and they either want the place to just do good or you know they they just want a ticket for friday night What's some things you'd like to see happen coming forward? Oh, man. Uh, you know, we're, we're kind of moving into phase, what I call phase two of our rebuild. Um, so, you know, phase one is getting the track running, getting it in the right direction, making sure that the racers know they're appreciated, the sponsors get their uh, proper allocation of, of exposure, the fans are enjoying the, the, the bologna burger on that brand new grill I just put in, uh, in the concession stand. These guys are, these guys, everybody's just happy. You know, after five o'clock when I've mounted all the race tires, I go into promoter mode and I go across the racetrack and I make sure drinks are cold, food is hot, people are happy, uh, kids are running around with those checker flags they just got and you know, they're having a blast and uh, that's phase one. Phase two is expansion. Uh, a Speedway is, is going to be, uh, again, the beacon of short track racing in the southeast. Um, so I can't let everything out that I want to do, but uh, it, it's definitely coming. There's going to be some expansions. There's going to be some, some opportunities to bring in uh, big national type events. Um, I, I kind of showed my hand a little bit earlier this year with the, before COVID hit. We had a huge thing lined up for Legends because those guys deserve a lot of shine. I agree. Um, they haven't been to Ace in a long time, and it was overdue. And I, I know a lot of Legends drivers, you know, and, and 
they were all asking, like, you know, when do we get a shot? When do we get a shot? And I was like, I'm going to put you guys in with a Cars Tour, and it's going to be nuts. Oh, yeah, that'd be you a know? good time. So yeah. they don't get to race much until shootout. Yeah. So we had a, what, we, what I called the, the, the spring shakedown, nationals. You know, it was going to pay 2500 to win, and, you know, we, we were looking to pull 50 to 75 cars. We were going to put them all in a turn one area, which we expanded. You know, we moved some fencing, and we're going to put a different registration building out front, so it's going to double as a ticket building also. We'll have a couple of new employees come on to run that, so we'll have registration on front and back, depending on what's uh, what's at the track. So you'll, you know, the fans pull up and they see 80, 80 trailers in the front. They're like, oh, what's going on? Right. You know, this is going to be big. Right. They, they know that when they bought that ticket, they're getting value, um, and that's important. But to to expand to that level of racing where we can bring in different divisions and do it right. Um, we you tried know. a bunch of different divisions too, right? Like I remember you did wing sprint car deal one time, I oh, think. Oh man, that you? was awesome. I, I, I'm a gearhead in all, I, I have respect for all disciplines of racing from late model dirt all the way to, you know, even karting. Uh, you know, these guys, it doesn't matter what you race. If you're racing it and you're doing it, I'm, I'm a fan of you. I appreciate what you guys are doing. And, yeah, and I try to give everybody a different variety of racing, not just late models. Everybody loves late models. And that's great. And I have a late model background, but um, it's not all about late models. We're, we're going to do late models. That's our weekly show. That's our gig. We love it. The fans love it. The drivers love it. And that's what we're about. But I want to try to give somebody a little bit of variety. And if I can, if I can bring in something that races on three wheels, you know, yeah, and if we can make it, it exciting, sure. we're going to do it. Sure. Man, that's, that's awesome. I, I just can't. I didn't foresee, I knew there would be some winners and losers in the COVID deal, oh. uh, meaning businesses, oh, right? Yeah. Anytime there's a, uh, such a disruption, there's definitely winners and definitely losers, but I, I didn't see it playing out as instrumental for A Speedway as it ended up playing, right? I just, I didn't think I would, I would turn on the news and see, see you know, the governor speaking of it. and I. <laughs> I'm intrigued by all of that that went on, and I can't thank you and your dad enough for, you know, for giving my customers a place to race. I, I, as I've told you many times, it's just not my game. A lot of, a lot of people are trying to get me into that promoter game, but I just don't know that, that that's my game. I, I try to stick in my lane where I, where I know where I know where I am. Um, you said you got some hot side hustles. Tell us about Accelerated Graphics. Tell us about what it does. You started it a few years ago, right? Like it's got to be eight, ten years ago now. Yeah, started it in 2012 as just a, a, a side hustle. Um, I wanted to earn a better living for myself. I had a I had a uh, uh, family at the time, kind of not really no children, but just a, I had a fiance at the time and uh, just. Um, wanted better for myself and wanted better for like everybody does sure. everybody wants better for themselves sure. and uh but you got to put in the work you got to put in the effort and one of the things that i always liked doing was you know making stuff look cool um I, i'm i'm a kind of uh i'm not really an extroverted person but i like to i like to look good i feel like if you look good on the track you're gonna feel good if you're gonna feel good you're gonna race good sure so i always tried to bring a nice car to the track i wanted it to look good um, and, you know, I had a lot of experience doing that ever since I was 16. So working side hustles during the summer uh, to make a little extra dough over at, like, the decal source, for example. Sure. Driving all around Charlotte, Mooresville area, wrapping cars and trailers and trucks and seeing, you know, all the big shops, all the big teams that we did work for. Um, it was really cool, and it got me hooked into that, and it's something that I wanted to keep doing, uh, moving into racing. The, uh, the biggest thing was, you know, man, we, we scuffed a fender up this week, and that thing's got to look right for Friday. You know, so then we go and we spend a couple hundred bucks to get some, some wrap vinyl and, and, and some new decals to put, on, to put on to fix that. Sure. And, you know, it didn't make the car go any faster, but it was just, it made me feel better. And, and so if I felt good, I knew I was going to perform and, and do as best as I could with what I had. Um, so it got to where I wanted to do that to save money on what I was doing. And so, you know, we got, you know, dad, dad really is the one that kind of pushed me to do that because he was like, you know, we, we really need to do this because he had a car, I had a car, he had two cars. 
and uh, you know, keeping those things looking good was getting expensive really quick. <laughs> so I started, you know, I bought a printer, I bought a, a cutter, a, a laminator, and and got some design software, and I started just playing. I spent all the available time I had learning, you know, force teaching myself to figure out the ins and outs of the design because that's anybody can print on sticky paper. It's the design that's what that's what's going to set you apart. It's the, the the effort behind it, the creativity of that is what kind of drives me to be what I can be. And um, so, you know, it, it got to where, you know, hey, I can print this on a, on a race car. So then it got to where I did my own stuff and, and I've run out of that very first roll of material that they, yeah. that they give you <laughs> when you like buy winning. that stuff. Yeah. And I was like, man, uh, what do I do next? And so I called some suppliers and they're like, well, do you have a, a, a business? And I was like, no. And they're like, well, you got to be a business to buy from us. So we started, I started Accelerated Graphics, and I just, in order to have a a write-off to kind of offset, I put a decal in my car, and it kind of just snowballed from there. Awesome. People, you know, hey, my sponsor needs a decal for his dump truck. Sure. And then it just, the word kind of got out. But uh, I always kind of stayed low-key. I did it on the internet, and I did it out of my race shop. I started out of my one-car garage. Moved it to my race shop where I had about 1,500 square feet. And then actually just this year, we moved to my new warehouse that has 7,500 square feet. And, uh, you know, a full in, a full, you know, a full distance install bay, a dedicated area for printing. We've expanded to screen printing, embroidery. Um, It's not just wraps anymore. It's wrap signs, banners, apparel. We are a full on branding workshop. So has the COVID been good for it? No. No. No, we were trending before COVID hit and before all the shutdowns, we were trending 70% over last year. Really? I, then, I had a lot of, I have a couple friends in the sign business and they seem to, because everything needs to be printed now for them, they do a lot of major corporate stuff. And, you know, the corporations with the COVID and all the restrictions and things, they need signs, they need this, they need that, they need so much infrastructure from the backside from absolutely. from that standpoint so i that surprises me i, I would have thought yeah it was it was different because my my uh my my i guess my customer base isn't because i've i've stayed kind of low-key i've been sure. racers their sponsors right. um uh you know my specific people that i know that own businesses they come to me and you know i do well at it but i've just now until this point started to go mainstream with it so, you know, that's why the expansion into embroidery, into screen printing, into, you know, everything that you could think of as far as needing for your business. Now we were able to do that, and now we're pushing that. Yeah, he got some good beanies for us. We have some performance center beanies. He, uh, they're, they're pretty neat. They come out really well. If you get in here, swing by, I still, uh, I think we got 30 of them or 40 of them or something. So we've given uh, we've given a few of them out, but... It's gonna start getting cold. Everybody needs a good, a good That's right. then, right? Man, I appreciate you making that drive all the way over here. I, I, I appreciate all the work that you put in toward uh, keeping a place to race for, for our customer base and for, for all the racers really. I mean, without without you and without, uh, you know, these tracks that are willing to kind of stand up and say, hey, we're gonna push as far as we can push. I think that's part of what's getting us to where we're, you know getting back to some normalcy oh I, I really appreciate you guys letting me have the opportunity to come down and and anytime we got to get you by the shop every once in a while anyways you can come in and see the cars and touch things <laughs> that, that gets expensive really it quick. does that's what, that's what we're after man we uh we uh we try to get you in here it's like a casino once we get you trapped inside then oh, you know we can man, go for the conversion but yeah. i got a taste of that at tri county yeah that's, that's it that's it it's a good time we gotta we gotta try to you know, try to bring each other up and, and definitely try to help each other's businesses. And, and you know, if there's uh, anybody, they can tell us where they can reach out to you. you you're all over the place. You're a Speedway, you're Accelerated Graphics, you're, you're all over. Where, where's yeah. the best place for them to get you? I'm not hard to find. I'm either on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. You can you can find us on aspeedway.net. Um, accelerated graphics is worth two tenths dot com. Uh, oh, I like it. Yeah, you like That's that. That's good. Yeah, I wanted to. I wanted to have accelerated graphics dot com, but that, so there's a company it. out of at Texas that has it. And um, so it's funny that I started before they did, I think, and and but they they called it like accelerated graphics of Texas. Really. And so uh, you know, I wanted that website first, but I, I missed it. So if they ever let go of it, it's mine. There though. you go. Yeah. There but, you go. Uh, um, any anywhere you know, I'm I'm very easy to get in touch with. Um, email is is fine. I'm well connected, so just uh, reach out to us. Let us know how we can help you. All right, man. I appreciate it. Uh, I'll do it for another episode. Drop us. Uh, we appreciate you coming. Drop us whatever questions you got in the uh, 
in the comments. We'll, we'll have him tagged. We'll definitely try to respond to all we can. We know he's got some races coming up. Do everything you can to support your local short tracks, please. It, it means the world to me. It really does. Without, uh, without fans in the stands, my customers have nobody to race for, and I got nobody to build cars for. So I appreciate all those people that, that dig deep in their pocket for that extra 12 or $15 to, to go out and, and watch a short track race, and I hope you, you enjoy it as much as I do. Once again, I'm Roger. This is Mr. Turner. Either one of us can help you reach out to us. Thanks.